So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can start reading Python code, even if you've never seen a single line of code in your life. If you already have some Python knowledge, a little bit of a Python background, you might still get a benefit out of watching this video, maybe because this is the kind of approach that I use for pretty much any programming language that I have to learn when I'm switching over to a new one for a new task or a new project. I'm going to give you a fair warning and say that there is no technical jargon, no technical terminology in this video. So I am going to be using the word thing a lot and you'll see why in a few moments. So let's say you're going about your day, right? You're doing a YouTube tutorial on Crow AI or something. I don't know. And you download this project and instantly you feel this sense of just being overwhelmed because you have all these lines, you have all this code. You've never seen it before. You're not a programmer. You've never really dealt with Python or any programming language for that matter. And even though you are a little stressed out, you know, you're pretty determined to get the hang of this. Now there's a couple of things you could do, right? You could take a Python course on YouTube, which will be a couple of hours, but at the end of it, you know, you'll probably have a good understanding. You could take a college class, which again, if you have the time and money and you can spend three months and $3,000 doing that, then fair enough. I don't have anything against education. I got a computer science degree. So, you know, if that's something that's available to you, good enough. Or you could really just start scrolling through this very slowly and start trying to figure out what kind of patterns you're going to see in this thing right here that you call a Python file. And even though this file is about 300 lines long, guys, there's really only four main sections that make up this project. The four main sections for this long project, I'm going to show you right here, is really just the imports. Here we have one, two classes, and then we have the main function. And maybe you're thinking, Hector, well, that's easy for you to say because you already know Python, you've been reading Python for a long time, so of course you can break that down very simply. But let me just tell you, I didn't need to read through the whole file in order to figure that out. In VS Code, you're gonna have these really nice arrows to the right of your numbers, which shows what line of code you're on. And here, when you click it and minimize it, well, it pretty much collapses this entire section. And even if we don't know what this is or what is related to, we see import, we see from, we can kind of see that there's its own thing going on here in this section. So we minimize it. We know it's probably, I mean, that is important, but that's its own, that's its own thing going on right there. And then if we scroll down, we can get this other arrow, collapse it. And here we have our class YouTube comments tool. And we see that from line 14 to 96, that's pretty much its own section. There's different things going on in here, but again, we can kind of see by minimizing it that it's its own separate thing going on. Now we move on to the next class, right? Class comments analysis. Now I know you're seeing class, you're already wondering what class is, even though we're not going to talk about anything technical in this video, but when you hear class, you can kind of think of like a blueprint. And the reason why I say blueprint is because within each class, there's a lot of things going on that are going to help you make a certain thing, build a certain thing, how to process a certain thing. So yeah, when you hear class, just think blueprint from now. And then last, you're going to have your main function, which again, you collapse it here. And now you're down to these four basic parts. Now, maybe you've done this before, maybe not, but I think this process can definitely help you reduce your anticipatory anxiety you have towards learning something new, whether it's a new technology, a new programming language, because even though it's still a 300 line program, and even though you're still not very familiar with Python, well, now instead of having this huge thing that was just so ugly and overwhelming, now you know you have it into four smaller parts. So if you want to understand your project a little bit better, well, now you could just take it one section at a time. You can open up this section and copy all this, paste it in ChatGPT, ask it, why is it using import? Why is it saying from? What does it do? How does it work? You do all that. And then you'd have a pretty clear understanding on what goes on in that part of a Python project. Same thing once you start looking into the classes, right? You could really just copy this, paste it in, straight up ask ChatGPT, Hey, what is a class in Python? What does that mean? What does it do? Why is it important to a project? And you would get its own set of answers right there. From here, you could expand your class. And as you can see here, there's these other subsections within the class that you just expanded. And again, we can also collapse those subsections that we see. And we also see here a different kind of pattern, right? Where we see DEF, then we see what looks like a title or a name of something. And then there's things between parentheses and the process continues, right? You can just copy this, paste into ChatGPT, ask in any way you want. You can ask to explain to you like you're five. You can ask to explain like you have no technical background. You can ask to have it explained with an analogy and you can spend as much or as little time as you want doing that kind of research. But what I'm trying to tell you is that as you break down these projects into smaller parts, even if you're not familiar with the syntax of the programming language, 
what's going to happen over time is you're going to start to get very familiar with the patterns. And the more frequently that you're able to identify these patterns, the better and more proficient you're going to become at reading these Python projects. So there you have it, guys. We went from taking this very long, very complicated Python project. We we're able to figure out how we can pinpoint what the main parts of the project are. And once we figure out what the main sections of that project were, we're able to visually analyze what each one of those sections was made up of. We're able to see that the first section contains the imports. We're able to see that the other two sections are just simply classes in Python. And then last, we're able to see that the last section is just the main function. And just like that, we're able to make the experience of reading code exponentially less stressful. In upcoming videos, I'm going to show you how you can navigate and read through a file. I emphasize the reading through a file because when you're reading projects like this, you don't necessarily read it top to bottom the way that you would read a book. You want to collaborate with other AI enthusiasts, with other developers, or with other business owners that are using AI agents for their projects. I'm going to leave a link in the description where you can join my school community because honestly, I think the fastest way to learn is by being alongside people that have similar goals as you. And let me know in the comments what you think about this video. Was this content helpful? Was it too easy? Was it stuff you already knew? My goal is to make content that is accessible to everyone regardless of their technical background so that you can get up to speed both quickly and efficiently. But again, I don't know that the content is helpful unless you let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.